Primal, the first title on PlayStation 2 from the developers behind the BAFTA award-winning Medieval series, takes you on a journey to a world lying just below the surface of ordinary life. Primal is the story of one girl's adventures through a fantasy world. She's a girl from the modern world, as we understand it, and she's brought into a, a series of demon realms by a character called Scree, who's been sent as a, as a guardian and an advisor to take her through these series of adventures, um, during which she learns about herself, her background, who she really is, the powers that she has in her. I believe that you are Arello's chosen. And during the game, you get to develop these powers. Uh, you learn about the characters and the environments in the world. And you get to see that behind the world that we know is, is a, a struggle. It's a constant struggle between the forces of order and chaos for the control of all our lives. Jen is the character chosen to save the four realms. This, however, is no mean feat. And to succeed, she will have to battle evil, overcome terrifying obstacles, and solve deadly puzzles. Most of our puzzles are very kind of environmental puzzles, so although we've got doors and keys and kind of more traditional puzzles, we've tried to kind of stay away from that as much as we can. Probably the, a puzzle that springs to mind is at the start of the um, first realm you play, Jen hasn't got any weapons at that point, she can't fight, she's not got a knife yet, and then you come across a cave that's got lots of nasty beasts inside that she's not going to go in there because she's going to get eaten. You hear those growls scream? That sounds like Malachi. They're primitive territorial beasts. Huge teeth, fearsome claws, fond of the dark. Scree being made of stone isn't particularly tasty looking to these creatures, so he can go through there. And then because they're kind of quite beast, kind of wolf-like kind of creatures, they're actually scared of fire. So he goes off, finds a torch, and then brings it into the cave, and then he can keep all those animals at bay so that a gen can go through unharmed. <laughs> With four vast realms to negotiate, Jen comes face to face with a number of demon races, each with very different customs, Abhinavdi, Abhinavdi, environments and dangers. There are four very distinct different demon worlds that we have in Primark. We wanted to make them as different from, from one another as we could. We have a world called Solem, which is a world that's always nighttime here, and we have a race called the Ferai who live here, who are kind of rugged hunters. Our second realm is uh, Aquis, which uh, is almost entirely underwater. And uh, uh, the race that live there are called the Undyne, and they populated the area with um, this huge arcane filtration machines to keep the water clean. And um, part of the, um, the gameplay in that, in that area is Jen has to, has to get the, the filtration system working again so the characters can survive in there. The third realm in the game is called Ether, and we have a race of demons here we call Wraith, and these are really nasty characters. They're almost like vampires in, in the way that they, they kind of lead their lives. The last realm that you venture through is the realm of Volca, which is a world set in a, a huge, dry, dusty volcano. Um, and the race that live there are the Jinn. Um, and when you first arrive there, um, the volcano is dormant, it's asleep, and, and the Jinn uh, are inactive. But as you adventure and explore through these corridors and, and uh, chambers, the light and the heat that you bring wakes them up and suddenly you find you, you, you've got an entire race of people all suddenly coming to life that you have to deal with. The characters of Jen and Scree dominate the game. Jen quickly puts into practice her ability to morph between demon and human form whilst Scree proves invaluable with his mental agility and special skills. Jen and Scree have both got very different abilities. Jen's abilities are all based around her demon form, so with each demon form she gets a different weapon and all her abilities are kind of very focused towards combat and that side of things. We've got about, uh, I think it's about 20 attacks for each of the different demon forms that she's got, so it's quite a lot of moves. And then it's kind of a freeform system, so if you keep hitting strong you're going to do lots of strong attacks. And the deeper down the combo list you get, the cooler, the more powerful, more impressive looking attacks you get. Scree, what's with the glowing stuff? It happens when I'm close to stone figures resonating with ferai energy. It means I can temporarily transfer my soul into any statue formed from this material. Scree doesn't fight at all, so his side of things is much more kind of based on the exploration of puzzles. So he can climb walls, he can jump, he can um, lift heavy objects. It's very much based around his kind of strength. With characters as distinctive as Jen and Scree, finding the right voices was essential. Cool. Cool! Just wait till you see me do it. Then you'll see what I'm made of. Cool. When it came to casting the actors for the voiceovers, we wanted to use actors that were really going to get into the parts and really have fun with the characters. 
So for Scree, Scree was really the toughest character because we wanted a voice which, which didn't sound like Scree looked, if you sort of mean. So it wasn't like a little guy's voice. It was a voice that had kind of ability and kind of depth to it. I need the essence from more ferrite lodestones before I can shift form. When they approached me, I didn't know the whole story. I found out later that the producers and writers really liked my work um, as Jakar in Babylon 5. So when they conceived of this whole thing in the character of Scree, in their minds, they really heard Jakar somehow um, in that role. Okay, okay, calm down. I'll take your word for it. With Jen, we needed someone that was going to be able to get into the demon side of Jen and, and really let go and really sound quite quite. Fierce. Show me your arms, half-breed. Half-breed, there he goes again. They got me excited about this role because they hunted me down to find me, uh, which was very flattering. And I think the reason that they they wanted me is because I played a character called Callisto on Xena. So I knew at that point when they liked that show that this was going to be based on a strong woman and there was going to be fighting involved. <laughs> Any music featured within Primal had to reflect the intensity and pace of the game. American Band's 16 Volt provided a unique soundtrack to the whole experience. It's a band that I had some CDs of, and one night I was just listening to them and thinking about the music that we wanted for the game and thinking, this works, this is the kind of stuff we want. In addition to 16 Volt, the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra also added their interpretation to the adventure. The cutscenes which we're recording with the orchestra at the moment, there were two and a half hours worth of them, and unlike seeing it as one two and a half hour film, it's more like five half an hour films, because you're associating a very different sound, instrumentation, themes, everything for each individual level, as well as trying to create a kind of cohesive whole so that each level does sound like it has some related components. With the kind of originality so rarely glimpsed on a games console, Primal is not only a feast for the senses, but also compulsive to play. The battles faced and worlds encountered make this a dark, compelling classic. <laughs>